reflecting on 50 years on the force. I've never, ever regretted a minute of my employment with the city. Why this officer isn't slowing down after half a century of civil service. We're able to take it to the next level and these officers are perfecting their craft. Police officers hit the mat to get a leg up on defensive tactics. Plus, I tag along with volunteers at a food rescue to learn what the program is all about. It has a huge impact. It feels really good. And a local nonprofit promises another year of great art, music, and fun. And it all starts right now on this edition of Iowa City in Focus. Longevity is something many of us hope for in our work lives, but it's rare to spend half a century working at just one place. I'm going to introduce you to a man who's 50 years into his career and isn't showing signs of slowing down anytime soon. I've been here for 50 years and I can't really find a day that I didn't enjoy my job. Dave Harris has been working for the Iowa City Police Department since 1967. It's been a dream job for Dave, but he didn't always know that he wanted to be a cop. One of the chiefs at that time who I was familiar with, John Rupert was his name, he asked me to, to come up and be a dispatcher. And he said, believe me, within a week or 10 days, you'll know if you want to be a cop. And that was the case. He immediately put my name in for and an application to become a police officer. Dave told me he had already held a few other jobs, but said they quickly became mundane. Working for the police department offered a solution to that problem. And it was something different. 24 hours a day. I mean, you never did the same thing over again. It was always different, and I kind of liked that idea. Once he made officer, Dave landed a spot on the night shift. Usually we'd come to work at 11 o'clock at night, and you wouldn't slow down till 7 o'clock the next morning. He liked the fast pace of the work, as well as the camaraderie with his fellow officers. All the people that worked that shift were just like a big family. Dave was eventually promoted as a senior detective in the investigations unit. But after a few years, applied to be put back on patrol. It's really hard to walk away from that kind of a situation, and I really missed it, and uh, so I went back. It was in this position that he made the biggest impact on fellow officers. He just brings the best out of people. Matt Johnson first joined the department in 1977. At that time, Dave was still in the investigations department. I was a bit in awe of him when I first met him as a detective sergeant because I kind of thought that was pretty top shelf stuff. Shortly after that, Dave moved back to the Night Watch. That's when Matt got to know firsthand what kind of a leader Dave really was. Dave was the kind of sergeant that if he asked you to do something, it was nothing that he wouldn't do himself. Matt says Dave's strong work ethic and encouragement helped shape those who worked underneath him. And when you were sitting there, he'd come up and slap you on the back and say, hey, good work tonight, you know, keep it up. Which is why so many people wanted to work with Dave. <laughs> so he had a group of officers that worked for him that, that wanted to work for him. Um, it was a fairly hot commodity working on his watch. After a long evening, it wasn't uncommon for the entire shift to go to the Harris house, where Dave's wife would have breakfast made for the whole bunch. They sort of adopted the whole shift and, and it just inspired Great camaraderie. We were just a tight bunch. Dave retired as a patrol officer in 1985 with the rank of sergeant. He went back to dispatch for several years before becoming a community service officer in 1991. The city of Iowa City recently honored Dave for his 50 years of service. I was very surprised. It was overwhelming. It really was. Where he received a standing ovation. Everybody was standing up. I didn't know that until Matt Johnson, who was sitting at the table, and he said, look. And I looked, and everybody was up, and it was, it was very nice. I enjoyed that very much. So. As for Dave, he is still putting in eight hours a day, working in the evidence department. For Matt, that's no surprise. I think Dave would be very uncomfortable if he wasn't working. Um, he, he's, he's, got, he's just got a real strong drive. Dave says he is thankful for every day he goes to work. It's always been an enjoyable job for me. I've never, 
ever regretted a minute of my employment with the city. And he plans to keep working in law enforcement as long as he can. If I didn't enjoy coming to work, believe me, I would retire. I would be out of there in a second. But I do enjoy it. Crews are coming, and, and this week have been coming to use uh, what's called a hazmat quick kit. Consider them as instruments, much like you'd use in the airplane, in the cockpit, uh, to guide you into a situation uh, where there's potential life safety risk, and uh, just identify your, your course of action. So it's, it's really a drill in decision making at, at a hazmat scene. disseminate if it's a, uh, what the chemical is, what the hazards are, and then what's the future course of actions, whether it's just a, a quick, like I said, uh, change in, in, in stopping the leak, plugging and patching, or if it goes uh, to a larger scale of uh, evacuations and, and isolating uh, the population. Keeping officers up to speed with training is a top priority of the Iowa City Police Department, especially when it comes to dealing with uncooperative suspects. With a little creative thinking, the PD was recently able to team up with some of the nation's best athletes to help improve safety tactics. Kirkwood and Kirkwood Court. Best case scenario is verbal, best case scenario is waiting for backup, and we're well trained to do that. But when the circumstances don't dictate that, and we have to take action, let's be really good at it. When Police Chief Jody Matherly first took over his new role a few months back, he began talking with the University of Iowa Police about improving some training. Be a little better at our defensive tactics and our ability to, to control people uh, with decreasing the likelihood that um, we would injure, you know, that officers would be injured or the, uh, the suspect themselves. And to do that, Matherly turned to a sport he has been passionate about all of his life. The perfect answer to that was to partner with the University of Iowa wrestling team. The police department reached out to the wrestling team in hopes of lining up some training. The coaching staff in Iowa quickly jumped on board with the idea. It's, it's a pretty cool partnership and, and we're glad to help in any way that we can and, and uh, hopefully that some of our techniques can transition over to the field. Members of the wrestling team, past and present, welcome the officers to their training facility at Carver Hawkeye Arena. They're being taught basically how to, uh, how to sprawl, defend yourself off leg attacks, being able to put a guy down and, and, and defend yourself. The idea is to teach officers some basic fundamentals that can help control a situation with as little force as possible. In the reality of it, those basic things are what, what come down to make the difference in a, in a situation like that. Basically, it's, it's about hand control and arm control. No strikes. Sergeant Doug Hart is a veteran on the force and has done defensive tactic training every year that he has been with the department. He says this idea was a welcome change of pace. You know, training can get monotonous. Uh, you know, we have older officers like myself sometimes don't look forward to defensive tactics training. What a great idea to freshen this up and I think it brought a lot of synergy uh, to the training and to our department this week. Hart adds that during his time with the department, he has noticed that officers with a wrestling background do have an advantage in these type of situations. In our experience, we find that oftentimes officers with a wrestling background have a tendency to use less force because they're comfortable in positions where they have to gain control either on their feet or in ground fighting techniques. The tactics learned during this training are designed to do just that. Teach officers how to get control of a situation as safely as possible for us to be able to do that more effective with less energy and do it safely uh, means everything. And this type of training has more than just the officer's safety in mind. We're using good technique uh, through this excellent training that the university is providing, it's a win-win for us and it's a win-win for the defendant, you know, for the suspect. Uh, we don't want them hurt. The opportunity provided a new perspective on important training for the department's officers.
And the wrestlers found the experience to be equally gratifying. It's really fun, you know, helping them out. They, they do a lot for the community that definitely goes unthanked um, and unappreciated. So it's really nice to get it to get a give back to them and help them a bit. According to data collected by the USDA, our country throws away between 30 to 40 percent of our nation's entire food supply. Much of that food is edible, which sparked a group of Iowa City residents to form a food rescue. Twenty years later, Table to Table is still making a big impact on our community. If the vegetables, you know, have a bruise, if the, the bread is day old, and we didn't have anywhere to take it, so it was just sent going to the dump. Sell-by dates and unsightly marks on produce often sentence perfectly edible food to the landfill. It's a problem that has plagued grocery stores and restaurants for decades. There are all these places that have great edible food that just goes to waste, you know, things that people won't buy. This wasted food is what inspired a group of concerned citizens to take a bite out of the problem. In 1996, Table to Table was formed. The, the founders realized, wait, people can eat this and are willing to eat this. Using their own vehicles, the group began taking food destined for the dump and instead delivered it to food pantries and other nonprofit organizations. For two reasons. First, we can feed people. And second, we can rescue this food and keep it out of the landfill. The group hasn't stopped growing since. The first year, about 50,000 pounds, which seems like a lot. Uh, but we're up to 2 million pounds now. In just 20 years time, Table to Table now saves 40 times more food than it did during that first year. The single biggest thing that led to our, our growth from 50,000 pounds to 2 million pounds was our volunteers and the ability to actually get in those vans, go pick food up and go deliver it. There are around 75 volunteers who regularly make deliveries. Each one of them is needed to keep this well-oiled machine running smoothly from week to week. We do around 350 pickups and about 420 deliveries. Meet Dina, who has volunteered at Table to Table for a decade. Today I'm actually moving like 22,000 pounds of food. Dina drives one of the big trucks that the organization rents out for larger deliveries. She is quick to share the lessons she learned early on. Oh, that's the other thing you learn right away. When you have food on pallets in the back of the truck, you don't go around corners fast. <laughs> There's a lot of inertia way in the back of the truck. With all the great nonprofits in Iowa City, I asked Dina, why table to table? And the concept of food being wasted and thrown away, it's just pretty horrifying. So she added that it only takes two to four hours a week to save thousands of pounds of food. You can get a lot of positive impact in a short period of time. We took this load to the crisis center, where it will be distributed to those in need through its food pantry. That's a key factor to the success of Table to Table. They don't store any food, keeping a big chunk of cost out of its operations. And to take that product directly from the stores to the nonprofits requires multiple moving parts. Okay. That's it. That's my, that's my big job. With some extra space at its new headquarters on South Capitol Street, the organization has been able to expand to eight delivery vans. Dee Dee has also been volunteering for 10 years. Mainly because I think food is basic. Um, everybody needs it, and we waste a lot of it that's actually very usable. She sees firsthand the impact Table to Table has by donating additional time to a food pantry. I also volunteer at the Crisis Center, so I see the food go back out to people and I see how grateful they are. 
On this day, her route included a load of food from hy V. After packing it up, we deliver it to the Hawkeye Area Community Action Program, where low-income families will be able to take home nutritious food to eat. By doing something little, you can impact people a lot. It evokes a feeling of satisfaction that Dee Dee hopes more people can experience. Just give it a try because it's, it's positive and it's fun and, and it's worthwhile. And I mentioned nutritious food. I hope you noticed that the deliveries I tagged along with was not just non-perishable items. About a third of it is fresh produce, meat, and dairy. Table to Table is one of the first food rescues in the U.S., and we are lucky to have it operating in our community. Part of the reason they are uncommon is because of the large amount of work required to make a project like this successful. But Nikki says that effort is well worth the reward. It seems like a simple thing. Go pick some food up um, that would otherwise go to waste and deliver it. It is complicated in its operation, but it's a simple concept and really important to our community. Summer in Iowa City is chock full of fun events and great festivals. And that's in large part due to a local organization behind many of your favorite events. Joining me is Lisa Barnes, Executive Director of Summer of the Arts. Lisa, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. So we're going to touch on the five different events you guys hold throughout the summer. But I want to begin with the one that starts in May. What can you tell us about the Friday Night Concert Series? This is the 25th year of the Friday Night Concert Series and so we decided to bring back some bands that maybe hadn't played for a while as well as introducing some new bands. We'll be running from May 19th through August 25th will be our last concert. All takes place on the Ped Mall from 6.30 to 9.30 on Friday nights and people can look forward to some of their old favorites like Winterland, Candy Makers, The Fez as well as some new and up and coming bands. And we have a special band finalizing our schedule on August 25th. The band's name is Paco, and they're actually from a whole nother country coming to Iowa City drumming. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So you've also got another series that you do right here on the Pentecrest Lawn, the free movie series. What are you guys bringing to the big screen this year? We have kind of changed our scheduling a little bit and we're bringing in a lot more recent movies. We actually kick things off in June with the movie Star Trek Beyond. And we wrap things up on August 26th with Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. So a couple of really recent movies, but then we're also showing some classics like Young Frankenstein. We've got Pitch Perfect. We've got the animated movie Home. So we've got kind of a, a broad array and hopefully something that'll appeal to everyone. It's also the 30th anniversary of The Princess Bride, so we're showing that again as well. You guys also are behind a lot of different festivals. Let's start with the Iowa Arts Festival coming up in early June. Tell us what uh, people can expect to experience at that festival. The Iowa Arts Festival will be June 2nd through the 4th, and as usual, we'll have main stage entertainment, we'll have artist booths. We've actually been able to increase the number of artists this year. We're expanding onto Clinton Street, going a block down toward the Ped Mall this year, so we'll have over 120 fine artists participating. We'll have all of our kids' activities on the Ped Mall on Saturday and Sunday. We'll have another side stage, the Lynn Street side stage, with a lot of local performers. And our headliners on Friday night are Sunvolt, Saturday night Elephant Revival. Sunday again will be Bluegrass Sunday. So lots of fun things going on throughout the weekend for everyone. Okay, and then just down the road after that, you've got another classic festival, the Iowa City Jazz Festival. Tell us about uh, some of the big performers you got coming in, one with a tie to David Bowie. Yes, that's very true. We're very excited about the lineup this year. The Jazz Festival will be June 30th through July 2nd with Iowa City Fireworks on July 2nd. Sunday night is going to be a big night. We have the Donnie McCaslin group, that's who you were referencing, who actually performed on David Bowie's last album. And then we also have Stacy Kent, who is a very well-known jazz vocalist. She'll be performing as well. 
We're again expanding a little bit with this festival and adding a block of Washington Street this year. We'll still have three side stages, Culinary Row, Fun Stops, some artist booths. So again, a lot of things going on in a fairly small area with that one. Okay, great. And then in August, you guys wrap up with Iowa's, Iowa Soul Fest. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. The Iowa Soul Festival this year will be August 4th and 5th. It's going to again be held on the Ped Mall. And we've added Friday night, we're excited. I can say we haven't fully re released the lineup, but Friday night we're gonna start with the fashion show that we held last year, which was extremely popular. And then we'll have Shade of Blue, another local favorite that will be performing on the main stage. Saturday is going to be filled with entertainment on the main stage outside of the Sheraton Hotel as well as we're adding a youth side stage that will have a variety of things and that will be on the um, west end of the Ped Mall outside of Utopia. We're again going to have a black entrepreneurs panel as well as a black authors panel, food vendors, fun stops, some artist booths, so again packing the Ped Mall. Yeah, you get a lot of stuff that's it's really family fun activity too. Yes, everything we do is family friendly and free. Lisa, thank you so much for joining me and uh, sharing all this information. Sure, thank you. And if you want more information on the organization or some of the festivals that they put on, go to summeroftheartsorg Next time on Iowa City in Focus, follow along as the library kicks their efforts into high gear getting its new bookmobile ready for operations. And let us know what topics you would like to see covered in future shows. You can email us at info at citychannel4.com. Or reach us on Facebook by liking the City of Iowa City government page. Have a great May. We'll see you next month on Iowa City in Focus.